And then the final thing he does in this passage is interesting. He gives a second example. Um, and this example is not taken from you know, ordinary life or the life of, of, of farms and fields. It's actually taken from the scriptures. So he'll often do this as well in his letter. He'll take one example from uh, daily life and then another example from the Bible. And so the second example he gives here of patience is that of the prophets. So he says, an example of suffering and patience, brother, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Now, why are the prophets an example of patience? Two key reasons. First, um, the vast majority of them never saw their prophecies come to fulfillment. That's the first thing. So think about Isaiah, all his prophecies of the suffering servant, or Ezekiel's prophecies of the new temple, or Jeremiah's prophecies of the coming Messiah and the gathering of the 12 tribes of Israel. They all died before any of those things ever came to pass. And not, actually, not only did they die, but according to ancient Jewish tradition, which James is probably assuming here because he's writing to Jewish Christians, uh, they were all martyred, right? So Jeremiah was, by, according to tradition, Jeremiah was stoned to death by his own people. And according to tradition, Isaiah the prophet was sawn in half while he was alive by King Manasseh, right? So he was cut in half and put to death. So if I were Isaiah or I were Jeremiah and I ended my life that way, um, executed at the hands of my own people or at the hands of my own king, and not seeing my prophecy, any of my prophecies come to fulfillment, I might be tempted to complain, <laughs> right? And yet, what does James say? The prophets didn't complain. They suffered in tranquility as they awaited the hope, as they awaited the fulfillment of prophecies of the word of the Lord, which they themselves would not see come to pass. Also, too, when it came to the actual fulfillment, think about this. Sometimes those prophecies took centuries, or in the case of, for example, Nathan's prophecy to David, a millennia, a thousand years went by between Nathan telling David a king would come from his own offspring, whose throne would be established forever, and the coming of Jesus Christ. So that's a millennia went by. So what James is doing is he's just drawing on the fact that if the prophets of the Old Testament could wait their entire lifetime and then even beyond their lifetime, centuries and even a millennium, for the fulfillment of their prophecies to take place, then how much more should we Christians be patient as we wait for the fulfillment of the prophecies of Jesus about his parousia, about his second coming, and about the final judgment that will take place at his second advent, his final advent.